uh, what's called a Heligoland trap. And as you might think from the name, they were used on Heligoland largely uh, to catch birds for eating as migrants years ago. A uh, hundred more more years ago, Heligoland was always quite famous for uh, migrating birds going through. And they've been adapted on many bird observatories in not just Britain but in all sorts of countries for catching migrant birds. There's one at a place called Rossiton on the on the Baltic where they are absolutely gigantic where you get uh, whole birds of prey going into them. But these are a fine mesh soft netting so they dip the birds even if they fly into them don't hurt and they funnel down there they narrow down to a funnel and as you go on down through here I've actually put baffles up so that they don't easily break back because sometimes you've got 50 blackbirds flying ahead of you by the time six of them have gone down to the front end they're already coming back and so they then fly on through here and this is the collecting box and you have a string which opens up a window. Now it's got perspex because that's much safer for birds than glass and they think that's the way out and so the birds will fly in there. You lower that down and then you go out the side of the trap and in these collecting boxes we have a rubber membrane that you can stick your hand through and you catch the bird that's in there and bring them out and you have bags and each bird goes into a separate bag. And uh, the most I've ever caught here in a day is 530 birds. So occasionally the whole place is just hooching with them when there are easterly winds, particularly in autumn, and they've come across the North Sea and especially if they then fly into rain. So you've got easterly winds and a bit of rain. That's what brings migrant birds down on the east coast. So uh, they've, been, they've been very effective. But I probably still catch more birds in the mist nets than I do in the traps. So I, I can't do without the mist nets. Always carry a supply of these bags. Each bird gets its own bag. Uh, they're safe in the bags and on a cold day they're actually warm in the bags. So these are standard bird bags which one bird per bag. Okay. Oh, we've got two birds to ring. I, to be honest I normally ring them in the hut. We brought them back in the bags and you need to be a little bit careful when you get a bird out of the bag that it doesn't escape past your hand. So you just ease your hand in and then you catch the bird in what is known as the ringer's grip. And this is basically between your first two fingers, the head is in between, you've got them shut, it can't pull its head out but there's a nice wide gap so no pressure on the bird. Now this one it's interesting because when I got it out of the net, I thought this is a willow warbler. It actually is not. It's a chiff chaff, and I'll show you why in a minute with a close-up. So each of these rings has got the address of the British Museum on, and it, I ring on the left leg. Nearly all other ringers ring on the right leg. I don't know why I've done it all my life, and I'm not changing now. So that's now ringed. They're soft aluminium rings. They weigh... Uh, they're very light in terms of the weight of the bird, so they don't affect the bird. And uh, normally one will take a wing length. Now if this is a chiff chaff, it will have a shorter wing than a willow warbler. It's got a wing of 60, which means it might be a male. I think this one maybe we're not going to be able to tell well, on, on the wing length. And <coughs> I always weigh it. There are other measurements you can do. But I only do it if I'm doing a study because it means handling the bird longer. So the bird goes into a little bag. And these are very expensive Swiss spring balances. And they're very accurate. 
and that bird weighs seven and a half. So that's seven and a half grams, which is about what I'd expect. Now, the way in which you tell a willow warbler from a chiff chaff, and this has got quite a bright eye stripe, but on the other hand, it's got thin, dark legs. And thin, dark, dark legs immediately says to you, chiff chaff. Willow warblers have fatter, pinkier legs. But if you look at the wings, if you hold the wing out, there is this very short first primary, which is on one of the other wing bones. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the sixth one on this has got a scoop out of it. That six wing feather has got the imagination chipped down. And that's what distinguishes it unequivocally from a willow warbler.